Hi guys. Okay, welcome to the next video. This is possibly going to be the last video on the lessons from my camping journal. Because where the Lord is taking us next, you are going to want to walk that path. I am excited about it. He's been showing me more this morning, and there's getting an anxious feeling about this that I want to move into. Okay? Let me give you the words that he gave me. The last bit of words that he gave me in my camping journal on when I was gone. The word he gave me was mandate. Now, he had just gotten through talking with me about the new commandment. He wanted me to understand that the new commandment, okay, because a command or a commandment, it's not it's not done with the intent to manipulate, control, or dominate. It's done with the intent to keep one into a safe boundary away from the effects of the one who comes to seek to destroy. Okay? <clears throat> For those who don't see the boundary as beneficial are the ones who allow things into their space that will kill them. If you don't respect the boundaries of the Lord, what you've done is you've put yourself in a vulnerable position of attack. All right. So, he just got through explaining to me that the new commandment, commandment, order, and authority, is what he had just gotten through sharing with me. Matthew 22 Okay, Matthew 22. If I remember correctly, the Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus, but they had a question. When the Pharisees heard, verse 34, that he had silenced the Sadducees, he, they gathered together and they said, from the lawyer, they asked him a question to test him. Who's testing who? Okay. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? They, they know there's many commandments. How's Jesus going to say there's a greater one? Are they not all meant to follow? And not only that, but the scribes and Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, they made 600 plus more. None of which they kept... But they were hypocrites because they made everybody else try to keep them. In the meantime, they're getting money. Greed. And their powerful position of authority. Yet, the truth was standing right in front of them. And they missed it. Jesus said to him, and notice they called him teacher because that's flattery. Okay, you learn that really quick in the spirit when you're put in positions of leadership. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second, it has a second part. All right. Loving with all your heart, soul, and mind is just the half of it. The second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. When one thinks of himself pretty highly, how can he love others who he think are lowly? You can't. That's not love. If God is love, the misunderstanding with love doesn't come from his end. It comes from what you received in error. So you can't change it to fit your own agenda. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Two more things that have a connection. The law 
and the prophets. Now, the law, what did the law give us? Guidelines, rules, not suggestions. They're not called the Ten Suggestions. They're called the Ten Commandments. Why did God command them? They needed a moral code. The world before them had been completely evil in all of its doings. Was it not the Lord's love to put them in a boundary to keep them protected? That's love. They wanted no boundary. They saw it as restriction. It depends on your vision. And it depends on the intent of your heart and how you look at it. But only one is right. You can't justify it and say it's right just to fit your own agenda. What the law did was it brought the guideline. It wrote it. It was written. Written language. The prophets, they fulfilled the other half of that language in what was heard. Same way in the New Testament. The Spirit is not understood unless both sides are understood. It is the law and the prophets. If you leave out the prophets, there is no connection in unity of the Spirit. Every bit of prophecy that has ever been isn't recorded in the Word. Let me ask you a question before I move on. You say to me, lively, the Spirit wrote the Bible. I agree. The Word is the Word. I know John 1. And I know the Word was with God in the beginning. It had to be that way. Because He is the Alpha and Omega. He didn't just show up. He's always been. I got that. Now, if someone says to me, you can go by God's Word alone. God's Word is an inspired Word. The Spirit is alive and free. In God's Word, you have prophets that were given Words from the Spirit that were written and were in form in God's Word. But everything for all of mankind isn't written here or else the Spirit would be dead. If you say to me, the Word of God does not exist past what is written here, then you're killing the Spirit. You're saying the Spirit limitedly worked in this fashion and had stopped working. But if the Spirit is alive and it is eternal, there is no end. Revelation has continued throughout the course of history. It's been 2,000 years since this was written. Are you going to tell me that the Spirit has been dead for 2,000 years? And there's been no other revelations made? Then let me ask you this. How then have the people in prominent positions in the last 2,000 years that have been called to teach the gospel message to the world that has become denominations that say they are living by the Spirit, how do you preach by the Holy Spirit if He's not speaking anymore? What living message of flowing water would exist if it ended in the Word? In order to understand the Spirit, the life of the Spirit, you must understand there are two witnesses of the Spirit that are in you, your eyes and your ears. You can't stop at the eyes. And get a full understanding. Because you're missing out on the hearing. You can't just have the ears and not have the eyes. You're still missing it. They work together in a marriage union. 
to make a complete picture. I think that most of us understand that connection by now. Think, I don't think that anyone has an issue with this idea of the law and the prophets that come together to fulfill the greatest commandment of love. So, if all the commandments hang on the law and the prophets, then you have to include both the law and the prophets. Not the law of rules. The law that was established to keep man in a moral guide of character, in a boundary separate from the world, apart, chosen, safe. Then you add the prophets, and then you get a picture of the Spirit at work. For someone who has never heard God will say that that won't exist. But just because you don't experience doesn't mean it's not true. The moment you do experience it, you will say, oh my goodness, how did I miss it? So, he gave me the word mandate. Mandate means to command, to delegate, to have authority, or to authorize a power, a control given to a territory for some specified purpose. Okay, I understand the Lord is bringing mandate to me. It is a legal order. It is commissioned to give it into one's hands. Okay? Now, Two words here, remand and demand. Remand means to go back and repeat the grave. To remand means to go back to repeat. To send the word back for complete truth and fullness. For the complete truth and fullness that's coming into your vessel must be a truth, an understanding. No error. Demand. To request, to ask, to order completely. I understand this very much. The word mandate has a root word of manual, which is a handbook. Or it also means date. Now, mandate, date. Manual's root word, date, to give. Now, is the Lord showing us date? Absolutely. With 100% without a doubt. Where is it coming? Through the manual? Through the mandate? Through the Spirit? Absolutely. There will be no other way. It means an appointment. A finger or toe. All right. What I'm seeing is an authority given over from God's finger of understanding given over for man's finger writing. Now, it is an exchange, and here's why. It's similar picture of Daniel interpreting the writing on the wall. Well, God wrote the writing on the wall. Okay? Daniel understood the writing on the wall. He interpreted the language. It's Daniel who interpreted the language that interpreted the meaning for the one who didn't know it. And that's what's happening.
It's becoming a date palm tree. Okay? The shady palm tree by the water with the fruit, the coconut, almond, budding tree that has the but branch that has become a tree is the palm tree. Uh, the palm of the hand. The palm covering of those being covered by the Lord, you, your covering is the palm. Your tree has shade. Palm tree. A date palm tree. To mark on the document the decree that's sealed. To mark on it an assigned date to indicate it hasn't been received. Okay. Mandate. Okay. Also the word that he gave me was Hest to bid to call to name height. H-I-G-H-T. Called, commanded, named. Called, summoned, waged. To pull. To Excite. To call forth in a writing of passage. Boy, do I understand this. Ever since I understood my dream about the writing desk, this has become more clear to me. It also means height. Called, summoned. To move in motion a wave to and fro. There's a confirmation. Hello. To rise and to invite. Well, that's what happened in my dream. That's what happened to my vision. The Moses video. Go check it out. I mentioned invitation in the reception line. Where does that word come from? It's a rite of passage. Passage. Pathway. Now, the next word came sight. And sight and sight came together. To summon, to urge, to call, to move, to stir, to set in motion. Sight with an S. A place of position. A location. A web site. Are you guys listening? Oh my goodness. This was before I left on my trip to Pennsylvania. These words. To move to right. Graph. Actually, gra graphy. Like topography. Stenogra stenography. Well, that makes sense. Because you know what? That is why I've seen myself in the courtroom. The stenographer taking notes of the both sides in the courtroom. The accusation into the mind. The judge. His words. The prosecuting attorney. The defense. The evidence. It's all been detailed and organized in the writing of the courtroom. The documents of evidence. Every detail is documented. Why? For judgment. I had a dream on 
three or four nights ago. I was in a stock room, right? I would say the stock market because the stock market in the kingdom is different than the stock market that you and I know. The stocks that the world has put in prominent place is that of the value of money. The Lord doesn't look upon stock as money. The stocks and bonds in the world's kingdom, the treasures that are heavenly, are individuals. Because people matter in the kingdom. Not what you bring. Not what you had. Not what you said. Not what you could have done. Not what you did. It's you. You are the worth and the value to the Lord. Because he paid for you. You are what is being purchased at the stock market trade. I was there and I saw levels and shelves. I was standing there. I had in my hand the possessions of things as they came in and I would put them upon the shelves. I grouped them in divisions. I documented their entry and I wrote and I was assigned to give a value or a number of a price to each item that came in. I noticed there was a shipment of what looked like banner pennant flags, much like the one I drew just the other day when we were studying about mast. And there's way more on that that I have not even touched on, guys. When we were studying that, the mast, it is it? Okay, I'm not going to find it. Okay, well, that mast from the flag is the mast on a boat. All right, it's the linen garment that weighs back and forth on the on the on the boat. It is the garment. It's the sail. All right. As I saw some flags come in, I put them on the shelf. I was arranging them and I noticed that they looked like some flags that had already been processed on the shelf. So I took them and put them where they belonged. I was making an inventory. I, I look I inventory which is the word that the Lord gave me, means a detailed list of what is found. It is a repertoire. It is a performer who has studied and is ready to perform. It is a stock of plays and songs. Now, plays are like what you see in football. They're taught to get a desired outcome. In other words, if you start at a certain place and you run the play, you're either successful at moving the ball or you're unsuccessful. In the kingdom, when success is very important and growth is very important, training is very important. Skill is very important. And vocation is very important. And both of those words have been my 
June gift words. Vocation, skill, and relationship. To do it over and over and over, you get good aim. You get good skill. Okay. Also listed under inventory is the word aura flame. Flame is what we've been dealing with because we've been talking about our burning bush and the flame. All right, we're going to go into that after this video ends. Okay, because this is the end of my lessons for my camping journal. It means a sacred banner or a golden flame. Okay, tariff, an assessment or a list of prices to be made known or taught. All right. It seems as if, from what I understood about my dream, is that I had been taught as to what was of value and what wasn't to understand the difference between what was real and what was not, what was counterfeit and what was truth. After having done it so much, you, you do have a repertoire because what happens is it, 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 you get a trained eye. So what I was doing is I was making a list and I was doing it item by item. There was an addition that was coming, which is great. Thank goodness there was growth. Because it's the kingdom stock room. The stock room is the family room. It is where the ancestry is. It is where the gathering place is in that area. So, when you arrive, when there's an addition, there's a collection that's being created, you go with like-mindedness. Things go together. If things are paired together and put there, that is God's way. He paired the animals, P-A-I-R, two by two, and brought them up the ramp of the ark, on the boards, into the ark, which is the bridge to the ark. He brought them in pairs. Pairs. Two. Right? It's twins. He brought them in, in twos for me. Stock. Ancestry or family. It's the framework of the boat. All right. You have a framework. The framework for us is in our DNA. It's how you're made. What is in you that has created? That is the question. Which tree will you be? Will you have been sitting at the feet of Jesus, becoming more like Jesus and becoming the tree of life? Is, is that what the Father will see? Mm -hmm. Or will he not recognize you at all as his child? Because you've been far from him. And you've become a different tree. You're a walking dead tree. In your own knowledge of your own good and evil. Having not overcome the flesh. Not walking in the spirit. You become kindling for the fire. You need the refiner fire. You get it one way or another, guys. You get it one way or another. It, it, the stock, it's planned. And there's a commencement. The commencement exercise is the beginning of the graduation. The graduation, the gradual, the grade, graduation occurs when you get your cap and your gown. But you also must hold your degree of service. A completed training and level of understanding. Then there is movement. Do you know what we're trying to do? To hold fast to the principles of God. Hold them up high. You're holding up the banner. You and another beside you. 
two by two. Well, as I saw in my dream, I began to notice that I was holding in my hand a I don't know what to call it a gathering that was in a box. It was supposed to be not supposed to be. It was stones, but the way that I saw them, okay. They're the stones of the ephod, the twelve tribes. But what I saw that I was looking at was that he was putting pairs together. It looked as if there were ten rows of ten. And I was placing in the last pair... I had found the match. It was lit. A flame. I was matching up and pairing. And what I saw to be two gold earrings, all of them were pairs of earrings, all of gold. And I remember seeing one. And when the other one came in, I remember it looking exactly matched as the other one. And I placed it beside it. And I was holding in my hand a boxed set of pears. And I felt like it had been completed. But I also knew somehow... That 10 by 10 must become 12 by 12. And it appeared that it wasn't full yet, the measure. While I was pricing and writing and tabulating, tabulating, in came a machine at somebody brought it in and I looked at it and I had seen it what I consider to be two times before it had already been marked and priced before and there was a discussion between me and someone of authority what the price was it was determined that the price was $34.95. If you add the three and the four, you get seven. If you add nine and five, you get 14. If you divide 14, you get seven. It equals seven, seven, seven. I was sure it was thirty four ninety five. I heard the Lord tell me thirty four ninety five. And somewhere in a voice I heard someone else give another price. And it was determined that was error. No. Nope. Thirty four ninety five. I knew this machine I asked the Lord this machine and he said it was a graph. At first it looked to me like a polygraph machine. And I 
understood the Lord to tell me that originally that had been the case. Because what a polygraph machine is able to do is read the difference between if someone is truthful or if it's a lie. Okay? The ability to do that, to discern it, that's what it is. That seemed to be part of the first machine. They've all been graphs of some kind. Then I realized, and I had to go look it up because I had a, I had a visual of it in my mind, and I went to look it up, and I got the word kinograph. Chymograph? Okay. Graph machine. Then he told me the last machine was a tablet maker machine. I understood this. At the time, I had this. I had not had my vision of Moses in the burning bush because this was before my trip to Pennsylvania and I didn't have that vision until I got back to Pennsylvania. But I saw in my mind this tablet maker machine. All right, tablet. To distribute a medicinal pill or tablet, I asked the Lord, Lord, it's for distribution. Of course it is. It's a business. Your productivity in the kingdom is for the kingdom. Everything is distributed for everyone else. I knew what he was asking me to do. What he had commissioned for me to do. in distribute. Because it was coming through my hands. The machine was for me. Tablets were medicine for healing. He told me inscription, description, prescription. Well, when I look at this, I now see the word tabular, tab, tabular. You know what it means? Planks, boards. the boards that are there that you lay down to go into the ark are being laid by the workers who are on the board. The CEO runs the company. Then he puts in place the workers and the workers bring in The business and the business is profitable and there is much profit in the kingdom tabular I understood that I was on the Mensa board at her I have understood this before and the word that I got from him was because it kept coming tessera it means Ticket. A four sided cube. The tablet was blank white. Its word blank white blank tablet is album. Go back to my vision. This happened way before 
my vision in my notebook. All affirmations, plank, blank, a list of names, a book to collect, souvenirs, photos, and autographs. To play a Grammy phone, gramophone record, record, records, gramophone, a Grammy. Do you know what you get with a Grammy? Grammy are music awards. Grammy. A knowledge of letters, graph symbols, tablets, epistles, notes, learning, writing, education, table of contents, and lists. This makes perfect sense to me. What it did was it helped me understand a very foundational thing. And this and what I learned in Pennsylvania has prompted me to where I'm taking you guys next. You're going to want to stick around for this journey. The passageway has opened. The walls are up. You walk across on dry land. You follow those who've made the pasture. See you guys in the next video.